Okay, green light. What is social accountability? Social accountability briefly is being involved outside of the bricks and mortar, being involved in the greater community. Community benefit, community engagement, those are often terms that are used to describe social accountability. In the not-for-profit world, uh, tax-exempt status has, has its place in the discussion around social accountability, although it's not the key driver of that. It's smart business, it's extension of mission with social accountability, um, but it's not solely compliance. One of the things we've done at Honors, we've developed a model to help organizations uh, develop and foster their social accountability program. Um, it's not so much a linear model, um, but it's very much a cyclical one, and I'm going to talk about that as I go through the rest of my slides. And the foundation is very much built on commitment. And there's a lot of common sense around that, but the bottom line is if you don't have support within your organization you know, to be an engaged member in the greater community, you're not going to have true success with this. And um, you know, whose responsibility is it? It's not one person. It can't be something that lives and dies based on the person who's in charge of social accountability within your organization. It's the board, it's residents, it, it's staff. It is very much a culture um, that, you know, you may run into some roadblocks. There are some people that don't fully understand it. I think the role of education is important, but it's understanding how to navigate some of that resistance and some potential roadblocks and developing a, a disciplined approach to this. Discovery is the second phase of the model where it's really very much knowing the needs of, of the greater community. So how can we be socially accountable as an organization in response to specifically what is happening in the needs? Are seniors going without meals in the day? Or are they anxious and depressed? And it's also aligning that external assessment of needs with what are our internal capacities and resources? And where's the sweet spot? You do not need to be the end-all be-all and, and solve all of, of the, the issues out there. You can sometimes um, you know, rely on some partners to do that as well. What are your criteria for what you will sort of focus energies, time, and um, resources on? Core values, alignment with mission. And again, you know, take a look at the needs and how that aligns with those things. Developing the program, we do think it's important to actually have a formal program in place. That way you're not scattered, it's disciplined, it makes sense, it's something that you can track and take a look at. Um, and having that also increases, I think, some of the accountability uh, the board oversight and understanding and knowing, okay, we intended it to be this way, but did it, did it end up this way? Um, what is the plan? What are our outcomes? You know, needing to, to measure things, and, and we're increasingly in a prove it world. There's a white paper you can check out all about partnerships. We're hearing a lot about partnerships increasingly with healthcare reform. Community partners have a role in social accountability. Um, you may not have an expertise to meet a certain need, but a partner may. You've got to tell your story. Now, your annual report does not need to look like that picture. If so, that's probably on the 101, the do not do list. Uh, you, you need to be able to say to your community, to your partners, to your stakeholders, here's what we do. There are some reporting 101 uh, principles to learn. So if you do an annual social accountability report, make sure you've got compelling case studies in there, along with some hard statistics of here's what we're giving back. Maintaining momentum around this, that this is not a flavor of the month, this is just not something we're doing now, but continuing that, that sustenance of this is important. And an ongoing evaluation is a key element of that too. And the next slide gets into that nice visual up there of the Plan, Do, Study Act. If any of you are CQI folks or minded, the evaluation piece uh, it definitely incorporates a number of those things. So it's taking a look at, again, you know, why do we do this and what are we aiming to get at with this? So your program really needs to embed some elements in this. And um, successfully doing that will not put you in a position where one person is trying to move mountains and uh, move that, that, board, that boulder, but yet it's, it's a group of people trying to, to maintain that momentum and move forward. So I think it's, it's having a steering committee. It could be a subgroup of the board that has maybe term limits. You get new people on and off all the time keeping the social accountability acti activities relevant and appropriate. There are a lot of resources out there for you, Leading Age, the website, um, 
certainly we have a social accountability toolkit which is free to anyone that you can log on and take a look at and that will walk you through it don't rush this does not happen overnight it is culture change uh, we encourage you to go there and take a look at it. It has, it's interactive. There are downloadable documents for you. If you want more information, booth 1002, and I have a session Wednesday afternoon on social accountability as well. So thank you.